In today's video, we're going to be using Visual Basic to make this little app here called Student Grades. And basically, you type in your overall grade as a number out of 100. So if I type in 45, click the Process button, and it tells you that you have failed. Up that a bit, maybe to 55%, process that, and we get ourselves a pass. Going up to 70, we can get a credit. 80, we get a distinction. Anything above 85, so let's say we get 98%, process that, and we get a high distinction. Okay, we're going to be looking at something called case statements today to make this app work. So let's pop over to Visual Studio, and I'll just close this solution off. And we'll get started on a brand new project. So let's go to the File menu, make a new project up, and make sure you're choosing Visual Basic and a Windows Forms app. The name of your app is just going to be called Student Grades. And make sure the location that you save it is somewhere in your Documents folder. As always, I'll save on my desktop just for simplicity. But make sure you're saving in an appropriate folder in your Documents. Click OK when you're ready to begin. OK, we get an empty form on our page here, ready for us to add some elements to our app. So the first thing I'm going to add in is just a big header up the top. So bring out a label. And for the text on that label, I just want you to write in capital letters, Student Grades. Don't forget to go down to the Design section here. Give your label a name, LBL Header. Now you can go back up towards the top and change the font around a bit here. Just make it bold and choose a larger size font. Click OK. I'll just push that over to the left somewhere at the moment, and then I can make my app a little bit smaller. Next thing I'm going to bring out is a text box. So there's the text box. Let's bring that out. And what we'll call this one is TXT Grade. So we've got the name here, TXT Grade. So basically your user is going to input their grade there. It has a number between 0 and 100. Uh, next to that we'll put in a label just to write a little message. And that is going to be called... LBL, oh, we'll just call it Caption. And the text that's going to go in Label 1 now, let's just scroll up a bit there. The text that we want to put in is going to say your overall grade is, and do a colon. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Next thing I'm going to put in is a little button down here, so we can process our grades when we press it. So let's bring out a button. Resize it however you feel fit. The text on that button is simply going to say process. And the name for that button is BTN. Process. And last of all, we're just going to need one more label. Just bring that label out and put it next to the button. The label name is just going to be called, uh, what do we call it? Label result. That'll be a good name. It's going to be our overall result. So pass, fail, distinction, high distinction, or credit will come up in this label. The text, we're going to have it as empty. So delete label one and simply have it as an empty label. So it is sitting there, just got no text in it, that's all. All right, so that's all the bits and bobs needed to make our app. Last thing I want to do before we start coding is just click on the form itself. Give it a better name, so student grades. And don't forget to give it a proper name here, FRM Student Grades. Remember, no spaces in the name of the form. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's get into making this app work. So all we need to do is have the user type into this box a number between 0 and 100. We click on Process, and their overall result is displayed in this empty space here where the hidden label is. It's a little label just hiding in there. So let's double click on the process button. Okay, and this event here now handles when we click on button process. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a variable called score. So I'm going to write DIM, so declare in memory the score as an integer. And then after that, we're going to write in the value of score. So score equals txt grade dot text right simple as that 
Now, moving down, we're going to start our case statements. Okay, and I'm going to explain them as we go. So the first thing we write is select case score. Okay, so we're going to be looking at what the user types into that text box. Okay, we're going to look at their overall score. Now, in the first instance, we write the word case. That just came up automatically for me, so that's fine. So the first thing that can happen for a user is they can fail if they get anything less than 50. So if we write case 0 to 49, then we're going to have label result dot text equal fail. So that's basically saying if the person types in any number between 0 and 49, that hidden little label is going to display the word fail. Okay, so remember this hidden little label just here. It's got no text in it at the moment. That will come up with the word fail. All right, that's our first case. Our next case. So let's write case again on the next line. Case 50 to 64. And then we press enter. So if they get a result between 50 and 64, we'll do label result dot text is going to equal a passing grade. So we'll just write pass. Okay, that's our next case. Let's get going. After that, we've got case 65 to 74. If they get 65 to 74, then we change label result. Let's spell it properly. Label result dot text is going to equal distinction. Oh, sorry, not distinction, credit. I'm missing one. There we go. After that, we've got another case. We're going to have 75 to 84. If they get between 75 and 84, label result dot text will equal distinction. And last of all, case 85 to 100. So in that case, then label result it's going to be the highest mark you can possibly get, and that's a high distinction. If you're still at school, these probably don't mean a lot to you, but when you go to university, this is how your grades are calculated, with one of those five marks. All right. Now, what if the user types in a number that is outside the 0 to 100 range? Well, we want it to display an error message. So what we'll do is go down to the next line, and we can write case else. Okay, so anything else beside the number between 0 and 100, what do we want to happen? We just write label result dot text equals, oops, in quotation marks, we'll just write invalid, no, oh, invalid score entered. All right, to finish it off, we just do end select, and that ends our case section. Okay, so instead of doing lots of if-then statements, so if the score is between 0 and 49, then we'll have that, then we'll do another if our score is 50 to 64. Okay, we've saved a bit of code and a bit of time by using case statements instead. Instead, It just replaced those ifs and nested if statements. Alright, so let's give that a crack and we'll see if that's going to work for us. All right, so we get our little app that pops up. Let's try a failing score first of all. We'll try 32, process that, we get a fail. I'll try another fail, maybe 49. We're still failing. Let's just pass with a 51%. We get a pass. We'll try 65, that'll get us a credit. 78 should get us a distinction. And 87 ought to give us a high distinction. Okay, let's try a number like 120. Can't really get 120%. So invalid score is entered. So that seems to be working well. All right. So that's how we use case statements in Visual Basic. Just save that up and see you in the next video.